Hello WCA, Mike Amore. I have the update for the games played this past Sunday. Um, I want to let you know that I have permission from everybody's parents to step on your toes. If and when you move the same piece in the opening without a very, very good reason. Um, four of you or four of the games this week, um, there were examples of players moving the same piece twice without a clear purpose and it got you in a lot of trouble. I would love to show all the good moves that you're making and believe me, you are making a lot of good moves, but this is clearly the number one problem in the 12 o'clock and two o'clock classes that I have to show you what's going on here. So here is a position with uh, Hannah with white, John H playing the black pieces. It's black to move and John played the move um, knight to g4. And it's very important to remember these ideas that when this knight crosses the midpoint line, you see where my mouse cursor, ooh, I can turn it into a little hand. Hello, look at that, I'm waving to the bishop. When you cross this midway point, you're in your opponent's territory. If you get attacked, you know, for example, let's say I just attack your knight, and you decide to go for this trade down here on F2, I'm just going to trade everything off with you. And this is a well-known concept that we've discussed before at the WCA. Two minor pieces for a rook and pawn in the opening almost always favors the person who collected the minor pieces. Look at the white position. White has three pieces out to only one of whites. You might argue that, of course, black has two rooks to one, but don't forget there are two minor pieces to replace that other rook. There's another problem. This is the opening. The reason the rooks struggle in the openings is because there's usually tons of pawns on the board. If you have too many pawns on the board, where are the rooks going to go? So early in the game, the minor pieces tend to have more activity than the rooks. That should make sense to everyone. So please, my friends, be very careful moving the same piece twice in the opening. Let me show you another example. Okay, here is my cousin James playing um, the white pieces against Aris. James in this position jumped his knight into d5. So it is in the center of the board. You will see masters occasionally move knights for the second time. It happens, but here, just kind of understand that, you know, I could maybe take this pawn here. White might get it back by, you know, lining up here somehow, but that's not the main problem. When you move that knight here, what happened is Aris just correctly attacked the bishop and black has already made this game kind of equal uh, because you have an issue. What, did, what do you do with these pieces? If you take the knight, the pawn is going to take back and then you're going to have to deal with the knight being attacked. So James just decided to trade it off right away, the knight. It's a nice in-between move because you can't take the bishop while you're in check. But the problem is the queen took back. Is white losing? Absolutely not. But any opening advantage that white had at the beginning of the game is kind of gone because black has, <clears throat> excuse me, three pieces out. I get choked up when I talk about minor pieces moving more than once in the opening. Oh, did I say that before? Let me, oh, one more time. Be careful moving minor pieces too many times in the opening. The queen and bishop are already putting enormous amount of pressure. And you notice that I have the knight getting ready to come into d4. So what happens here, once you invite the queen out, you still have to come back to dealing with this bishop. Uh, white is kind of, the game is equal here. White, again, is not in trouble. But I'll repeat, any opening advantage that white has is probably gone. So um, what could you do? You might be able to take the knight and then continue with your development not fearing a trade on f3. If, if black voluntarily breaks that pin, you could even trade the queens here and, you know, take back with a pawn. And this position is really equal. Um, it's drying out. I mean, I don't know, maybe black has a little something here. Or I, I don't know. It's not much at all. 
But the point is the game continuation, what James did is he put the bishop on c4. And when he moved it to c4, it allowed this knight into d4. And white now is starting to lose um, or get into trouble because look how much pressure is on this poor little knight here. And uh, James ended up getting in a lot of trouble. He, he, he just broke the pin right away, but that left this knight uh, not defended enough. And I don't remember exactly how Aris took advantage of that, but um, probably the clearest way is to just take the knight, check, and that wins the queen uh, because white cannot take this knight. If they do, they get mated. Do you see how? Correct, just bishop takes. And I highlighted the g2 square, and you'll see there's no way to stop either queen g6 or queen g5 check and you're you have big problems okay so please my friends be very careful let's look at one more maybe two okay here we have um jake and emerson from the 12 o'clock class emerson had the white pieces and we're getting close to the end of the class you know and in here black is clearly winning they have a a, a big material advantage but there was something interesting that happened if I were able to just flip the board, isn't that, I, I don't know, I say it every week, just how fast I am at doing that. If it's black to play here, and if you do the math, you'll see that you're going to be up a whole rook. If I were playing black, I would seriously consider trading the queens by taking the knight on d2. Uh, because if I take the queens off the board and the knight, look what's left. You have four pawns for white five for black, plus black has an extra rook. You could even consider just moving this pawn to g6 and catching this pawn with your king. What is white going to do here? Any open file that you get on, the black rooks can challenge you. And if you end up trading a pair of rooks, that's going to leave black with an extra rook. So this is called trading down. I mean, your opponent has no counterplay, really virtually no chance for white to come back from this, right? What Jake did is fine. It's actually a pretty cool move. He centralized his queen. I'll just show you a couple of moves. Emerson put his rook on the open file. There was a check. Knight went to f3. Queen here, uh, trying to get the queens off the board. And Emerson could take the pawn check first, but he decided to get the queens off. And then he took on g7. King goes to h8. Here, just as the class was ending, I suggested that white play the move knight to g5. White is still completely lost, but there are some traps in the position. You have three pieces dangerously close to this king, including this pawn, which is serving a very important function. It's protecting the rook, meaning if you move this rook on f8 anywhere, the knight takes the pawn checkmate. The king is, it's over. If you carelessly chase the knight away, does anyone see why that's a bad move? Because now it's a draw. Very cool. Check. You get out, check. And a perpetual check will be on the board. Keep in mind that none of this would happen if you traded all of the pieces off in this position. Okay? But even after knight g5, if you're sharp enough with black, you have to realize this rook is threatening to go back and forth, back and forth with a, with a uh, draw. You just need to cover this square. And you could do that by attacking the rook with the bishop. And if you got checked, it would only be one check. You just put the king on g8, and here white is in big trouble. The point is, though, at least you have a chance after knight to g5. If you go back to the trading down position here, there's no chance. So again... You're in a tournament game. You have a huge material advantage. Keep it simple. Take, 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 take. There's an old expression. Keep it simple, Simon. K-I-S-S. -S, spells kiss. Keep it simple, Simon. You guys know who Simon is? Bet you don't. Game over. All right? Let's look at one more game. Okay, let's finish with... Um, a sample from the kind of openings that you guys have been playing. So this this particular game was not played in the class. I just looked up a position and kind of want to share with you similar ideas that are played 
from the same kind of positions you guys are playing every week. So try to remember you always have the opportunity to play a pawn break, a move like d4, and trying to open up the game. You see this little pin that you have here, how that bishop has the knight pinned to the king? So if this pawn gets to d5, that can be a problem. So what can black do about that? Well, they're behind in development, so develop a minor piece and break the pin. If there's a trade in the center, okay, it would become white's turn. Let's flip the board for a minute. Okay, same position, I just flipped it. You're playing white. Do you guys see that you could move the same piece twice? No problem, but why not develop the dark squared bishop? Put some pressure on the knight, pin it to the queen. Black could do the same. Castle, maybe make a trade and break the pawns. But, you know, white has bad pawns, but they have a couple of really strong bishops. And all of a sudden, say queen e7 to clear this line. The rook comes to a half open file. Black castles long and you play a move like queen e2. Look at the rooks up at the top of the board. These up here, let me highlight them for you. This one and this one. Do you see that they are connected? You guys see that, right? Nice, how about down here? Same deal, see how they're connected? The concept of connecting the rooks means all of the minor pieces have left the house. They're no longer staying home with, with the queen and the king. They're out and about. So unless you have a really, really clear reason, let that be the main lesson for this week. Please use all of the minor pieces and do your best to get those rooks connected and activated, okay? I will see you guys um, on Sunday.